Welcome to Inspirational Leadership. I'm your host, Kristen Harcourt, and I am super pumped for another wonderful conversation with an amazing, amazing guest. And I am happy to introduce you to Afosu Jones Cordy, who is a meditation coach and musician from the Washington, D.C. area. He has been teaching mindfulness and meditation to young people and adults since 2004. He is currently the male voice on the Balance Meditation app. More on that later. And he teaches classes, classes and retreats across the country. His philosophy is that everyone is deserving of their own love and compassion. Welcome to the show, Afosu. Thank you so much for having me. Well, where to begin? So where I want to start is how did this podcast conversation get started? I, I reached out to Afosu because I love, love the balance meditation app. And yeah. I've been using, and I was just telling Afosu it's been, I, I believe I'm at 197 days for my streak with Incredible. anyone who knows me on the show knows that I'm, I'm very goal oriented and like to really honor my commitment. So I'm going for at least 365 days to start. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Wow. <laughs> But I, I, you're incredibly talented at what you do, not only the voice that isn't really, really soothing and calm, but I, I just think it's so effective with this app because you take people to so many different places and it's not just about a guided meditation, but really helping people learn mindfulness practices with the app. So anyone who isn't familiar with the balance app and, and nobody's paying me to do this, this is just because I love it. I, sure. I highly recommend you check it out. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think, you know, um, the, 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 the remarkable thing about the way the, the Balance app works is that, you know, it really works with the user based on whatever your own goals are, you know, if it's getting better sleep or um, reducing anxiety, etc. You know, we record for almost an infinite number of situations so that it really does tailor itself to to you and, and makes for a really personalized experience. And for me, the major thing is that it's helpful for people and that people derive some benefit, you know, so um, when I get that feedback that people are getting something um, positive, that it's making a positive impact in their lives, it's very, very meaningful for me. Yeah. Mm. So good. So good. So I think to get started, um, it would be wonderful for viewers and uh, people listening in to get to know you and your story a little bit more. I mean, as I was introducing you back in 2004 is when you started to really be teaching yeah. meditation and mindfulness, but how did you get started on this path? Hmm. Well, <laughs> there are, there are different points of origin that I could begin with and it, it, it let's see so um you know in my youth my mother was a yoga and uh, buddhist practitioner i'm an only child and she and i are very close and um she would take me to the yoga studio she'd take me to the temple with her where she would go and chant and stuff and so those were my first kind of exposures to um i guess the meditative ways of being um i also was like many kids my age inspired by um you know the kung fu movies that were based out of the Shaolin temple and, and the, the different monks that were meditating in there. And I just thought, you know, that was so cool. And I was starting to see some parallels in my, in my real life, you know, at the, some of the temples I was visiting when I was young and my parents really gave me free um, reign to explore my own spirituality, which I think is pretty um, unique in, for most families. Um, and my family's from Ghana in West Africa. And um, so for, for Ghanaian parents, that it's, it's, it's also quite, um, uh, quite the anomaly for their kids to kind of have the freedom to dis discover and decide, you know, what their path is going to be. So um, very fortunate that I had that free reign of discovery. And, um, you know, when I, when I got to, 
so yeah, so I, I, you know, I, I, I went through multiple different expressions of spirituality throughout my young life. And then when I got to college, um, I was finding myself interested again in um, the path of meditation. Um, I was reading books on my own. Uh, I met my then girlfriend, now wife, and her mom um, was a meditation teacher, went to some of her retreats and really started getting back into it. And I think where it crystallized for me is when my then girlfriend, now wife, um, became pregnant with our first child, Sundara, um, while we were still in school, almost while in, in, in our last year of college. Um, I was kind of struck with the notion that um, bringing myself into the path of meditation more um, deliberately was something that would be good for me as a dad and would be good for this child. And um, that's kind of, that's, that's kind of, you know, the, the, sh the condensed version, you know, after, after, um, after I had that sense of conviction around the birth of our first child um, or the advent, I should say, um, I kind of have been no turning back since then. Yeah. All the, the, sort of spiritual meandering kind of found its way. And that's, <laughs> that's been the way since then. Wow. And I, I think for anyone listening, you have four kids, yeah. which there are different things that come along with having four kids. I feel like Absolutely. the number one that, sh that shows up for me, how mindfulness and meditation would really contribute to this is the ability to be patient and mm. listen and be present and yeah. uh, create an experience for your kids. And I'm, I'm sure you're getting an opportunity to do what your mom did for you, which was is, is kind of allowing them to, to be and nurture who they are. Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's super important for me that they're able to do that. And, um, you know, I, I also want, I don't want to create the impression that by being a meditator, it automatically made me a better dad or a better person. I definitely, you know, being a 21 year old uh, father, what, you know, came with its own set of, uh, of challenges and, and bumps along the way. Um, but, you know, my daughter and I, before she went to college, we actually had a pretty powerful heart to heart, you know, about, um, you know, just a, a recap of what it was like for, you know, for her to be my daughter and for me to be her father. And I thought that her being able to express her truth to me was an indicative um, aspect of um, her being able to find her voice through um, the the set presence of mind and self confidence and all that other stuff that meditation can give you. So, um, so yeah. So again, so I think it's I I do think it's been beneficial to 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 my family and hopefully it continues to be so. Yeah, yeah, and you know I think I'd love right in this moment to even just pause when we start to think about mindfulness and meditation. There's going to be some people who are listening that they hear the words thrown out a lot, but they're not necessarily 100% clear on what that means. And so I think it's nice to even make the distinction around what's happening with mindfulness and what's happening with meditation. Sure. How would you describe it? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I do think that's important, and I also think it's important that to 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 um, to acknowledge there that there is a distinction between, for me, mindfulness and meditation are are connected to my personal spirituality, but they do not have to be connected to anybody's um, spiritual uh, path. You don't have to be a spiritual person to practice mindfulness or meditation. Um, it it one of the great things about these practices is that they are sort of infinitely adaptable to, um, to the, to the individual. That said, um, there are some subtle differences between mindfulness and um, meditation. Um, I would say that mindfulness is the practice of being present 
and being kind to yourself and within your environment. So in practicing mindfulness, it can be as simple as bringing your attention to the feeling of your feet against the ground in this moment, opening your ears to the sounds that are happening around you, taking a deep breath or a few, and then pausing to offer yourself some kindness, whether that's reflecting on something you're grateful for or simply saying something kind to yourself, offering yourself some appreciation. And then perhaps you could send out a kind wish for the world as well. And, you know, that doesn't require having to stop or, 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 um, or sit or, you know, do any particular kind of practice. That's just something that we can bring. Those are simple moments of mindfulness that we can bring ourselves to at any time, anywhere, just arriving back in the present moment with an attitude of kindness. That's what I would say mindfulness is. Yeah. Meditation is um, more of a deliberate, formalized practice of mindfulness, um, where you are taking a certain amount of time to pause in your day and um, bring your full attention to the present moment using um, a particular anchor, whether that's the breath or sound or sensations or your thoughts or emotions, and just being present with what arises and coming back to the present moment again and again. And the two are, are really intertwined, mindfulness and meditation. One is, one I think is more um, adaptable to, to any moment, which would be mindfulness. And then meditation is, is something a little bit more formalized. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think you did such a, such a great job of just explaining what that is like in that moment, even as you started to ask questions. And I noticed as you were doing that, I started to take my feet and I rub it on the <laughs> carpet and feel and realize, oh, I wasn't really noticing before what my felt my feet felt like yeah. on the carpet. And I was going more in my body. And I think it's, it's such an important and, and a great opportunity now, because one of the things that I talk a lot about is especially a lot in organizations as leader, as leaders, we can spend a lot of times up here in our head and we're not really dropping down and feeling what's going on in our body and noticing what's happening in our surroundings and really being in that present moment. And, and for, to me, that's where we start to also connect to, to our awareness. And, and sometimes yeah. people, it's hard to even articulate, like, what does that mean? But we don't realize like, we have 50, 40, 50, 60,000 thoughts. Everyone has kind of different numbers yeah. a day and we can start to become so hooked and don't realize how much we're, we're believing that those thoughts are who we are or what yeah. thoughts are, are true. And so I'd love to talk with you, go a little bit to this place around what does that look like to tap more into our awareness and not be pulled into our thoughts? No judgment because they're not going anywhere, oh, yeah. but change our relationship with our thoughts you know it uh i this morning i was having um a little bit of a thought thunderstorm <laughs> where my mind just you know wasn't being particularly kind to me and um you know one of the benefits of these practices is that i can notice that you know this is just, these are just the thoughts that my mind happens to be thinking right now. And I don't really have to believe any of this, or I can examine or, or, um, or uh, I can dive in a little bit more and, and, and see whether or not this narrative is true. And, or I can just kind of short circuit the process altogether and bring my attention to where are my hands resting right now? You know, where are my feet resting right now? What's, how am I breathing right now? What, what are the, what are the sort of tangible truths of this moment as opposed to this uh, kind of imaginary, speculative, um, uh, jumping all over the place um, <laughs> uh, environment that a lot of us have in, in our minds. So um, 
as we familiarize ourselves with the ability that we all have to be present, to be in our own bodies, to, to notice the, 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 the colors and the, uh, the textures of the world around us and to get out of the mind made world, um, uh, you know, the, the, the less we have to identify with the thoughts that pop in and out of our minds. And it's really easy to identify with thoughts because it's a part of our inner narrative and it, it, they feel authoritative. They feel like they, um, that they, like they are ultimate truths, but a lot of times there, it's just like um, the fuzz that you get when you're turning the dial on a, on an old radio, you know, it's just all kinds of, um, expressions uh of of the brain trying to sort out reality <laughs> and and they don't really have as much weight as we give them so it's actually very easy to come to our senses very easy to come into our bodies the challenge is that we uh, many of us haven't made it a practice and so it does take a little practice but we can get it over time for sure well, and you know, what you just said there is, I think is a, a great um, reminder that I hear this a lot. I work with a lot of high achievers and I'm like, I can't do that. Like for me, like I get how other people would meditate, but I, I, I can't do that. My, my mind doesn't get silent. <laughs> and I said, and then, or they'll say, oh, you know, I tried it a couple of times. It's not working. And I said, oh, it doesn't <laughs> listen. You could be meditating for years. And sometimes you have a day where you just, your mind is really busy the whole time. And so I think there's this misconception where people think meditation means to be a fantastic and they're already being high achiever meditators. Now yeah. you can see. Right. Right, right. is that I'm supposed to sit down and no thought it's going to be silence for the next yeah. 15, 10, half an hour, whatever it is. And that if that's not happening, that they're somehow not doing meditation, right? Talk to me about that, because I know there are a lot of doers who are listening right now. <laughs> and to me, it's about coming back to the being, but it's yeah. also, I think some stories that are not true. Yeah. So that definitely the misconception about meditation and, and, and mindfulness that it, that it deals with slowing down the mind or stopping thoughts or, um, uh, or yeah, or, or anything in that neighborhood, you know, really couldn't be further from the truth when we are practicing mindfulness, when we're practicing meditation, we're just allowing ourselves to be as we are excuse me, and we're giving ourselves a little anchor that we can come back to if, um, you know, if we notice that we're kind of drifting into the past or drifting into the future or sort of just lost in imagination, um, we're, we're giving ourselves the tools to be more present, but we are by no means looking at the thinking mind as uh, as the bad guy, or trying to silence the thinking mind or anything like that, you know, um, our minds think like our hearts beat, like our lungs breathe. I was talking to a doctor and she said, you know, when we're when talking about mindfulness to other doctors, uh, this, this is kind of like gross analogy, but she was like, our mind secretes thought like the intestines secrete uh, poop. <laughs> I was like, yeah. But yeah, she was like, you know, doctors just love talking about, talking about <laughs> things like that. So I was like, but I thought it was a great metaphor. It's like, you know, the mind just produces thoughts. That's just what it does. Is it possible for the mind to slow down sometimes? Yeah, but, but um, that's not the goal. The goal of meditation is to be present with your experience and, um, and to keep coming back to that presence and to hopefully develop more kindness towards yourself and a little bit more compassion towards yourself and, um, and to understand yourself more. You, know, mm -hmm. you don't have to stop thinking. <laughs> it's in, in fact, it's not really within the realm of everyday possibility. Yeah. For most of us. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think from your perspective, what, what do you think is the barrier from this for some people really putting, starting to be open to, to practicing these different techniques? I think, um, for some people, you know, it's, it's those common misconceptions about meditation, people feeling like, oh, my, my mind is too busy to even try that. 
um, which as we've just said, is not the, not the point, you know, you can come, come to meditation with your busy mind, let your mind be busy and, and, and just, and see how your mind works and no, what can you notice about the thoughts that you think? So anyway, um, that's one barrier. Another barrier, I think sometimes people think is time like, oh, I don't have, I don't have time to set aside to meditate. And um, I always say, you know, keep your ambition around meditation very, make it doable. You know, you can practice meditation for one minute every day. You know, I mean that, and, um, and that would actually, it, it will make an impact, you know? So um, yeah, it's, it's some people kind of over inflate the, the amount of time that they need to bring to, to the practice. You can begin with just minimal, minimal time and, uh, and allow it to grow. Um, I think, people have people come from spiritual backgrounds where they associate med meditation with a kind a particular type of spirituality and that doesn't agree with their um you know religious or spiritual backgrounds and um <clears throat> while m many of the practices that we um have come to learn in mindfulness and meditation you know have um uh, sort of parallel origins with um, different spiritual backgrounds, actually practicing mindfulness or practicing meditation doesn't require any sort of uh, religious affiliation whatsoever. You know, <clears throat> there's a lot of scientifically backed research after decades and decades of research of people from all walks of life, all spiritual backgrounds who, you know, that can, that, that, that lend, um, our knowledge to the understanding that meditation is something beneficial for the human, no matter what. Uh, and any other barriers? Um, maybe you think your life is too busy or you've got kids or your job is too demanding, all of those things. And really um, there's a great teacher named Deepama who said, you know, whatever it is you're doing, be aware of it. That's, it's a fun, that's kind of a, a fundamental practice. You you bring your busy life, bring your bring your whatever it is you've got. You know, it can be an object of attention. It can be the subject of your mindfulness. You can be mindfully doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me one of the things I try to do when I'm remembering this practice is consistently throughout the day, just asking myself, am I aware? Am I aware? Am I aware? Just yeah. to pull, bring myself back to even notice like what, what is going on in this moment? Like who's running the show? Am I here? Am I somewhere yeah. else? And it's been very interesting how much that can ground me and bring me back to the present moment. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, um, um, uh, there's a funny practice that I have done for years. Like if, if I ever wake up in the middle of the night to get water or go to the bathroom, I'll, I'll ask myself this question, like, where, um, where am I? And the answer is right here. And what time is it right now? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. that's always, that's always true anywhere you are, no matter what time it is, it's yeah. always right here right now. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me, I remember there was a watch and the watch just says on it now, right? So you look to see now, <laughs> yep. now. Um, which right. I find kids are so great for that. Cause my eight-year-old still to this day, he's like, what is it today? Is it yesterday? Is it tomorrow? Like to him, it's still right. always just, it's now it's yeah. so confusing for him these yeah. days and these, <laughs> these timelines and these barriers, it's difficult for him to work around it. Um, it's, yeah. he's such a great reminder of that presence mm -hmm. that's naturally in younger kids. Yeah, it's just right now, always perpetually. Yeah. Yeah. So I always like to give um, audience members an opportunity to get to know you better. And, sure. and we're also about inspirational leadership to me is about being vulnerable and sharing ourselves. And so sure. when you, it doesn't have to be related necessarily to your meditation journey, but I'm curious around what are some of the things that you've learned about yourself or mm. have sometimes struggled with as, and, and I'm going to say leader in that we are all leaders. We lead in sure. our lives. We leave in our lead in our communities. I'm curious around what some of that, some of that uh, deep learning has been for you. Yeah. Um, it's a great question. I think, um, I think it all really revolves for me um, when I began to examine my own mind, um, one of the things that I came to notice was um, how 
sort of unkind. Um, I habitually had been to myself um, in in my in my inner monologue, my inner narrative. <clears throat> um, as as more and more people have have begun to talk about this, you know, I think it's been dubbed the inner critic, um, that voice in your head that says you're not good enough, or that um, that that feels like you know everything's going to end in disaster, or that criticizes all your past actions, um, makes you feel like you're an imposter in your role, or um, you know irredeemable from some mistake, and I I I I, I have a pretty supercharged inner critic <laughs> and um and it's been um it's that's that's been tough to navigate um but it's also been the source of what inspires the work that i do uh, knowing that i am not alone in this kind of um um uh, evolutionary development of inner criticism that pretty much every human being has. Um, I really want to encourage people to develop a practice of being kind to themselves, of to develop a practice of um, transforming your inner monologue into something more um, supportive, turning your mind into an ally as opposed to having an acrimonious relationship with it. Um, so, you know, I've, I've struggled with anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, you know, dealing with intrusive thoughts, unwanted intrusive thoughts. And, um, and I'm definitely not alone in that. And um, along the way, I realized that the, 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 the only way I'm going to stay in the game is if I transform how I relate to myself. And if I continue to pick myself up every time I fall down, if I remind myself that I am enough um, and just continue to, to take those steps to be more present and more kind um, and forgiving to myself, um, you know, that has helped me to stay in the game. I, I would say that if there's been a benefit to from my um from my, my life as a musician, as a teacher, you know, and as a practitioner, it's, it's been, it's been just being able to stay in the game and, uh, and reminding myself that, you know, I have a place here. It's, uh, you know, every breath I take is sort of nature's affirmation of my, um, of my, of my space here in, in, in the world. And, um, and yeah, so I know I was kind of moving all over the place there, but that's, that's kind of, that's, that's been the underpinning of this whole journey is, is learning how to be more kind to myself and, and, and being inspired to share that with others. Yeah. Mm. I, I really felt that. And I just want to thank you for being open and, and mm. trusting and sharing that with, with, with our community, because I know there's other people who are feeling exactly the same way as you do and feeling less alone because you shared in that beautiful way. Mm. And the other thing that shows up for me, Afosu, as you share that is, I think sometimes people also do feel like they have to go at it alone when that kind of stuff's happening. And I'm wondering yeah. if there's been things that you've noticed where you've learned to ask for su support or ask oh. for help um, when there are th th things that have been going on. Because I, I can definitely say as, as a coach over the last five years in my practice and in my business, but even before that, I, I mean, I recognize now I've been coaching since I was like 12, just not realizing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right? I, realizing yeah. that's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> the inner narrative, I, I hear this over and over. And I think sometimes when, and what I love about coaching, because it is a co-creation and a supportive uh, partnership is that somebody yeah. can be guiding that person to help recognize all yes. those times, because the inner narrative almost becomes such a part of who they are in the background. They don't mm. realize mm. Mm. how unkind they're being. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's really important, I think, and, and, and a part of what I think makes mindfulness and meditation so 
powerful. And I'm not just like plugging these things because that's what I do. But I, I mean, it's, it's what you're saying about not even being aware that you are being, you know, habitually unkind to yourself. Um, you know, we can come into that awareness by by taking a look at our minds. Like, what is my mind doing right now? What's those 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 pauses? Some somebody once said that mindfulness is also the pause that remembers. You know, it's just like just you know just pausing and remembering to ask yourself, like, where am I right now? What's my mind saying right now? How's my body feeling right now? What are the messages my body's giving me? What is the narrative that's happening in my mind right now? Um, do I need to support my body in any way? Do I need to um, support my mind in any way? Do I need to, do I need to listen to what's happening inside? Um, do I need to um, disregard? Um, some of us have very, very loud inner critics. Some of us have um, and frankly, some of us just have trauma and mental health issues that, that require more support than, um, than what we necessarily have the personal faculties to unravel and talking, working with a coach was first and foremost, recognizing that that's true and that that's okay. So, I mean, for me as, um, even as a coach, as a teacher, and, you know, I want to say at, as an extension, as a black man, you know, it, uh, I am comfortable with sharing that I see a therapist um, regularly, and that's been super helpful. I am a coach also, and I um, do have a coach that I work with, and um, and I have a network of friends and family that can help me as well. Um, and I think that it's important for people, especially people who consider themselves to be high achievers or leaders and don't feel like they want to burden anybody else with um, their, um, their challenges. Um, it's important to remember that we are all human beings. Every single one of us um, has inner challenges that we face. And because we are not alone in our humanity, we don't have to be alone in our struggles. Mm so eloquently said and and it actually brought me to my where where you landed there is perfect for where i wanted to take you next which is you know what what do you think workplaces need to be aware of in terms of mental well-being mm. we have i talk all about humanizing the workplace because guess what we have a whole bunch of humans working in organizations yeah. not robots they're humans mm perfectly imperfect and you know I, i'm gonna give you the magic wands and say <laughs> okay you've got the magic wands from your perspective what would you like to see more of in workplaces to support the humans yes um if i had the magic wand i i had i had the benefit during um the height of the pandemic of the praying that, that it was the height um um <clears throat> Um, to begin to, a, a lot of different organizations began to recognize that um, their, their, their employees were experiencing burnout, um, that their employees, you know, um, who come from marginalized groups had, had, had been dealing with microaggressions in the workplace or just been marginalized, et cetera. And, and some organizations were really doing their best to kind of right the ship and, um, and acknowledge acknowledge where harm has been done and then offer programming and um, services to their employees to support them. And I think that um, I think that more of that needs to continue. You know, if for some reason um, we have in the past um, sort of forgotten or not acknowledged just, you know, how complicated it is to be a human being. You know, it's, 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 um, it's actually remarkable that people can get up out of work, get their kids out of the house, or just pull themselves out of bed, get on the road or get online and show up for a job that they have to dedicate their, their mental energy, their physical energy, their emotional energy, and then leave that job and dedicate their mental, physical, and emotional energy to their own personal endeavors, families, et cetera. It's that, that, that's a lot, you know, and, it, and 
acknowledging that, um, that and, and, and then acknowledge, acknowledging the universality of that um, can really just open up so many possibilities where we care for each other along the way. You know, we're all just along going, going on along the way on our own journeys. And we can absolutely care for one another as we go. Mm. So, so important. I, and I think just the way you acknowledge all those different things that, that the humans are all experiencing on a, an yeah. hourly daily basis, um, is so important And it. It does make my heart happy to see more and more organizations getting that and in, investing in it, not because they're worried about productivity and ROI, but really investing in it because they're caring that they, yeah. they care about the people and it's a different energy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the great, the, what are they calling it? The great resignation. So many people are, are leaving, not the workforce, but whatever their job was at one point in time, um, because they are prioritizing their, their mental health. They're prioritizing, um, what's, what's really important for them. And so I think the, the work, the, the workplace writ large is going to have to continue to adjust. And I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. There's a reset happening. So sure. I don't want you to leave without us doing, <laughs> taking some time to do a short meditation together. Sure. Um, I think our audience, it would be wonderful for them to get a little taste. And then I'm telling you, check out the balance app because then you can get it every morning, like I do or evening or SOS whenever you need throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. So um, for anybody who's listening out there, if you are in a place where it's safe to um, to pause, uh, to sit down or close your eyes, um, please do so. If you're not, you can just listen along and whatever's easiest to follow, please do follow along. So again, the invitation is to perhaps close your eyes or just let your gaze uh, drop down a little bit so, so that your gaze feels soft. If it feels comfortable, you can close your eyes. Take a moment and just let your shoulders drop down. Give your abdomen permission to soften and relax. Notice the feeling of your body making contact with the surface beneath you, whether that's the floor or a chair, a bed or whatever. As you breathe in, you can silently say to yourself the words right here. As you breathe out, you can silently say to yourself the words right now. Let's try that for a few breaths. Breathing in, right here. Breathing out, right now. You can do this on your own for the next two breaths or so. Right here, right now. Take a moment now as we bring our mindful moment to a close, our short meditation to a close. And think of one kind thing you could say to yourself. Based on how you're feeling right now, if your best friend or someone that you love and care about was feeling the same way, what words of kindness or encouragement or love or forgiveness might you offer them? And just offer those same things to yourself. It can be as simple as, may I be well, may I be happy, may I be at ease. Let's take a deep breath together, breathing in and breathing out and if your eyes are closed you can open them and if not you can lift your gaze and come back <laughs> so nice. how you feeling i'm loving it i'm feeling good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh so good so good yeah. and look everyone this was that was like a minute and a half, two minutes, maybe three. I don't know. I just, <laughs> yeah. uh, time, 
time stood still. I can't even tell you how long, yeah. but imagine doing that a couple of times throughout your day. Look how, how impactful that was. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't require a lot of effort. I think maybe that was another, for me, it was another misconception that I had to strive really hard or I had to try really hard to push myself to achieve some kind of high level of meditation. And, um, you know, that was unfortunate for me. <laughs> and I, I definitely want to help people not make that mistake. Meditation is it's, it's very simple, can be easily engaged with. And um, yeah, so hopefully that was helpful for y'all. Mm. I have loved this conversation, Afosu, and I would love for you to let people know where can they learn more about you, your work, your music, sure, everything yeah. you're creating in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this has been a wonderful time. Thank you so much for having me on. And, um, you know, uh, I am, let's see, you can find, well, you can find me on the Balance app for sure. If, you, if you're interested, we, we, if you're interested and you're listening to this in 2021, um, new users are um, offered a free year of balance. So um, we, we put that initiative out just to support people during this sort of unprecedented time. <clears throat> so meditate with me on balance. Um, you can find me across social media at uh, my artist name, Born I Music. So that's B-O-R-N, the letter I, music. Um, so that's on Instagram at Born I Music, Twitter at Born I Music, Facebook.com slash Born I Music. Um, you can look up my children's book, You Are Enough on Amazon, just type in Ofosu Jones Corte, you are enough. Let me think. Um, you can go to my website, bornimusic.com. There are so, or you can just, you know, you can just search, you can just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> um, any number, uh, and any one of those ways are ways to get in contact with me. And, um, and I'm usually pretty good at responding to messages and stuff like that. So if you ever want to give me a shout, please feel free to. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. And I will have all of that in the show notes as well. Oh, well, I, oh, that's right. I just dropped an album. <laughs> it's called In This Moment. And uh, I'm very, very proud of it. And uh, uh, so hopefully y'all check that out too. Oh, so cool. In This Moment. Go it's just on... do a Google search and learn yeah, all about right. all about the stock. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being here and everybody around the world. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. We're sending you lots of lots of love. Yes, yes, please. If there's one takeaway from this that I would like your listeners, viewers to take away is that please begin the path or continue the path of being just a little more kind to yourself, just a little and try to try to try to incorporate that self kindness every day. And self kindness can look like so many different things. It can look like how you talk to yourself internally, which is huge. It can look like taking yourself out for a walk or giving yourself pauses to breathe and be mindful throughout the day. But yeah, just be a little nicer to yourself if you can, please. Yes. Words of wisdom. We will end right there. <laughs> Thanks. Bye everyone. Bye.